<laughs> okay, so so start of what sort of what we got cooking is everybody remembers when we did um, Elastic Map Reduce out in Amazon and how much fun that was. And going through the process, only about 60% of the folks in the class were actually successful in making it happen. So we're going to kind of revisit this. We're going to do this in a little bit different way. What we're going to do, right, because I really want us to do a big data project. There's always more than one way to skin a cat, right? So if we can't get everything to come up and, we, and we're going to have brownouts in Amazon Elastic Map Reduce, then what we do is we bring it here locally. So what we're going to do is we're going to learn about working with Sun Oracle's grid engine, which is essentially a Hadoop master shell. So when you spun up those instances, right, that was essentially the stage that you were setting for your big data set. And that's exactly what you're going to be doing here and installing the Sun Oracle grid engine. The grid engine is basically an underlying substructure within Hadoop that will allow you to have one master controller computer and you all can flip a coin for who wants to be master. And then you'll have three slaves on your table. I'm glad no one said anything horrible on it. Oh, it's the best. Yeah. All right. So, what is Grid Engine? All right. So, it's a quick and easy way of setting up a multi cluster system using the existing hardware that you've got. It basically runs in a VM, right? It's basically an apt get install, and there's a number of components you want to do. According to the marketing material, Oracle Grid Engine is the best thing since sliced bread, the most widely deployed, the unmatched scalability. I swear to God, marketing people, they just like go right for the buzzword to make managers happy on top of a rich set of advanced scheduling capabilities. All right, but the basic idea is that this is an engine to run Hadoop for your big data project, all right? So what we do is instead of doing it over here, we do it locally. Can you hold all questions until the end of the show? Cool. All right, so how to install. There's basically one really good install set, and we're gonna walk through this, all right? So webappleblogspot.com, and the actual URL is here. You'll find this slide deck in the course shell for some other class, not this one, because I don't care about you. Uh, right? So basically, what you want to do is you want to install Sun Grid Engine, SGE. Right? So when you hear me say SGE, I'm talking about Sun Grid Engine. Of course, we know Sun got bought by Oracle, right? but it's still the Sun Oracle Grid Engine. So basically, what you want to do is just do a sudo apt get install. And you have a number of different chunks to this. You have the Grid Engine client. The Grid Engine Common, which is all the common packages that you'll need. The Grid, Eng grid Engine Q Monitor, and then the Executive. If it's not a master node, right, then remove the Grid Engine Exec for all your slaves. If during the installation you'll need to set the cluster cell name, such as default or pod1, pod2, polywog, uh, what other weird names have you guys come up with for stuff? Um, some of them I can't say because I'm recording this. <laughs> so I try to stay away from near pornographic ways of describing your grid engine here with masters and slaves, okay? <laughs> Do me the favor. All right. When you install this on other nodes, it's going to be sudo apt get install grid engine client grid engine exec. And again, the same that cell name is what ties you together, right? So if you name your cell Dan, then your master's name is Dan and all your slaves are named Dan which can be really confusing in certain circumstances. You want to set the SGE root and cell environment variables, and you're going to find this in the configuration file underneath at SGE, right? So you set your root variables to the installation path of SGE, whether it's user bin, user s bin, wherever you installed it or wherever the app get install installed it. The SGE cell is the name of which is the default or Dan, or Bob, or Jane, or Mikey, or whatever, right? You can go into and exit the Etsy profile, and Etsy bash, add the following two lines. Export these variables like you did in 215. You want to export the variables so you can kind of go through this and see what you've got, right? And then that will just tie it straight into the boot up sequence and you won't have to sweat it. Configure the queue monitor. All right, so this was actually written by a couple of folks. The person whose website I ripped this off of and then another person named Junjun, Mao, right? So invoke Qmon as super user, so sudo Qmon, right? Fairly straightforward. And that will allow you to see everything that's going on with the Qmonitor and how it's put together and what's running in it. If the Qmon failed to start, what could end up happening is you may be missing a font because right, it's going to call a specific font, and I thought this was really interesting as part of a troubleshooting process. If it fails to start due to missing fonts, Adobe Helvetica, the 
other bit, pseudo app get XFS, here's how you get those fonts in place. And this seems to be a fairly common issue with Ubuntu. It won't load the Adobe fonts by default in the server environment because we're not loading a desktop. All right, we're just loading the straight shell. All right, configure hosts, administration hosts, add a master node, and then the other administrative nodes if you want to have more. Host configuration, you need to submit the host by name and IP address. All right, so you add the master node, you submit all the other ones in the host configuration file, add your slave nodes, click on done, and you're done. All right, you don't have to worry about it. You're pretty much so good to go after that. Then you need to configure a user. Who's the, the account, who's the master account that's gonna control all these that's shared along all the other systems, all right? So add or delete users that are allowed to access SGE. Right, for the beginning, it's always gonna be root. Root can always access SGE, but if you wanna have someone else do it, then that's cool too. If you wanna do it underneath a restrictive, slower set of people other than root, you can do that here. So in user configuration, due to user set, highlight the user set, AR users, and click on modify, and then input the username for who you want to have run this process as. All right, and again, it doesn't need to be root, it can be a much lower level process. All right, configuring the queue. Because you don't have any data yet to work on in queue, when you're gonna configure the queue, the host configuration deals with what computing resources have been allocated to this program on each one of those four computers that you'll be working with. All right, so it knows if one computer was set to 256 megs of memory and five um, gigabits of hard drive space, but another one set, you know, one gig and blah, blah, blah then you're gonna be able to, the computer will automatically know what resources it has and allocate computing problems to it based on how fast it needs it to run. All right, this queue controls the way devices connect to hosts and users and how it queues up the data to be processed in small manageable chunks. The smaller you make your boxes, the longer it will take to run your process. So, queue control, the queue control underneath hosts confirms that, that all the execution hosts show up there. When you bring up queue monitor, you should see all four of your computers, master and three slaves, all right? Cluster queues, if you have cluster one and cluster two and then cluster three, cluster four, cluster five, cluster six, you could literally turn this whole room into one great big huge hawking computer, which is really cool if you want to run SETI at home and find space aliens. No? Is that what we're doing? You know, we could, but it's not. How many people really want to hunt space aliens by doing it this way? Two, three, four. Uh, that's not even a simple majority. Sorry. Use access. Okay. Allow access users uh, to user group arises under general configuration field slots. Raise the number of CPU cores on slave nodes. So if you have a dual core, you can set one core aside for grid engine, right? And then let the other, and the computer will think it only has one core to work with. All right, so if you have dual cores, you can actually set aside cores, so it's kind of a core management, right? Queue control, in terms of instances, this is the place to manually assign hosts to queues, so you can control the state, whether they're active or suspended. When you're doing this in Amazon, it does all this stuff coming up automatically, it runs its process, it shuts it all down automatically. And this one, you set it up manually, you manually run the process, and you manually shut everything down. So there's some differences in terms of how Amazon works a little bit easier, but with a success rate of only 60%. At least I can see more of what's going on if we do it this way. All right? configure a parallel environment, right? Cluster queues, again, let's say if we take pod one and pod two and you decide to run as a cluster, right? You're gonna set a parallel environment. Your one environment, you have to match pod two's environment, right? So if they have an outlier, you'll wanna fix that outlier. So make sure that everything's configured and low and available from the available PE parallel environment to the referenced PE. So pod one would be the reference. You're the master of the cluster. Pod two would be the available PE and would match it clean across the board. All right? So confirm and close all your configuration windows, open up queue control, and see again if parallel environments are running and that it shows up that pod one and pod two are mirrored as nodes. Right. Once created, you can link to it, you can add to the queue, and then you're done. So you could run your project twice as fast. All right. Check whether all the hosts are running. Right. You can go into query host, qconf, qconf, and all the rest of it by typing this really long line of garbage. 
All right? But these would be all the commands to make sure that all your hosts are running properly and within the boundaries that you specify. So Q host shows the list of all the nodes that are available. Q conf should list all the host names of all the nodes. Q conf minus SQL should be list all the queues for what you have in running processes. Or you can also grep for certain things to make sure that the master and the slaves are working and that the daemon is, is either running or not running. Make sense? You have to reboot the nodes if master or exceed stop, right? So if one of the node tasks fall over, you actually have to reinitialize the entire node. So if one computer in that pod goes down, you have to reinitialize the whole node to bring it back into place. All right. you, here's a little quick test script that you guys can run to see how well it works. All right, so fairly easy. And then job submission. When we're getting ready to put a job into the queue so it can work, it's going to be queue sub is your command that you type in. All right, so queue sub test would be I want to submit the job called test. All right, and then a job ID will be returned if it successfully went into the queue. <coughs> If you type QSTAT, it will tell you if the job is running. Right? So if QSTAT says it's hung up on node three of four nodes, then one of your slaves is having operational difficulties. It could be powered off, misconfigured, uh, can't allocate tasks to it, and it will tell you what's going on with that. You can also set it to debug right? so that you can see how all your nodes interact with each other, why it's doing the job. So really kind of neat. So QSUB is how you submit your, your queue. And then QSTAT is how you see if it's running in the process. All these are going to be run at the master, not at the slave level. Always check your logs. I oh, just love that, that phrase. Again, remember, when you guys get your uh, teacher evaluations, I definitely want to see the complaint as a weakness. Always makes me look at my logs. <laughs> I just want to see that because it will make my whole day. Right? Var spool, grid engine, Q master messages. Right? So that will give you all the messages for the master node. And then var spool grid engine exceed will give you it for the slave nodes. So there's kind of a difference in terms of how it will take a look at it. Master node is going to have a master index of all the logs, but sometimes the slaves will catch something that it needed to catch along the way. Possible errors. All right. My output file has a warning no access to TTY. Why, if I can't access my main screen, if I can't access my terminal, that's a problem. All right, this warning is caused if you're running in the T shell or the C shell, right? So since we're going to be working in bash, make sure you're working in the bin sh shell or the bin bash shell. Question. All right, master host failed to respond properly. Error message, comlib error, access denied, blah, 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 blah. This can help you put through by making an alias file in your host aliases, setting up your master and your slave relationship in terms of who does what, where, why, and how. Right, So this is kind of a cool way of solving that problem. And I've actually seen this problem a lot, and it's because DNS has been kind of faulty, because everyone loves DNS, and DNS is never faulty. <laughs> right? Sometimes you have to kind of force it and tell it where to go. All right, And then some good sources. Right? So we have the Ubuntu man page for setting up and installing SGE. We have the place that I just ripped this entire freaking PowerPoint from. Thank you. Then we also have another one from uh, City University New York, which is a little bit older. And then there's another one in dealing with an MPitch2 cluster, which is a similar to the Oracle, the Sun Oracle Grid Engine. So it kind of makes sense, right? You guys sure it makes sense? Are you happy? Is this awesome? Are you excited? Yeah. Is this the best thing that you could do today? No. Are you surprised I'm swinging this on you on a Friday? Yeah. Yeah. Do we actually have to do something? Yes, you do. Okay, so you had a question, Mr. Carl. Uh, no, it's, not important. it's not important now, but it was important 15 minutes ago. Yes, it was a timing thing. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? Anybody else want to lay their head on their desk and go 99? <laughs> God, guys, it's Friday. It's like the most annoying day of the week because that means I'm going to not see you guys for two whole honking days. Oh, how oh, sad. <laughs> I'm missing your logic. Do you want All us right. to come over and do donuts in the front you know, parking lot? You know, that would be funny. Condo? That would be <laughs> funny. around in circles. Like a bat fly around the parking circle. That would be awesome. All righty. I can sit there and rep my...